God bless you and welcome to this special session, special broadcast from Kadosh Ecclesia Church of God in Christ. We're so glad you're with us today as we take in something that's very important, that's very dire, and something that is something that we should really be in consideration of, especially during this particular day and time. The Bible says in Isaiah, the 25th chapter and the first verse, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless everyone that has joined us. I know that it's a little late in the evening, but I wanted to address something that the Lord had placed upon my heart for all of the saints to know of. And then even those that are not in right standing with God, when it comes around to this time of year, we see much abundance of spiritual activity that for which is associated in the second heaven that is associated with the enemy, the prince of the power of the air. and the things that are occurring, even with the, related to our election, is associated with divination, witchcraft, miscommunication, so many things that are associated with lying and divination, and associated with even pharmacia, sorcery, is around this time. It's because of this date that is marked in the calendars for those that are demonic worshipers of the enemy, demonic worshipers of the occult. And so the Lord has placed upon my heart to talk about this particular matter and go into great detail. I have done this for the past two years in ministry with Kadosh Ecclesia, but the Lord has wanted me to be able to present this out for everyone so they can have knowledge of, of what's happening and what we should do as saints associated with the holiday on tomorrow. And so it is about basically Halloween, the inoculation into the occult. So it's talking about the truth about Halloween and its association with witchcraft and during this session i believe in doing this that we have a, you have an opportunity to be able to ask questions in facebook that we can address all different matters associated with this and so if you have any questions associated with this particular subject matter let's go ahead and talk about it and discuss it and so we can go through any of the anomalies anything that has been kept or not even discussed or you may not be aware of we thank god that this will be one of deliverance one of healing one that will give people much insight in what's occurring and how we should proceed as saints of God. And so I'm just making sure that I have on Facebook that I can be able to see if any questions that arrive, especially as we go through. God bless everyone. God bless Sister Blackman, Sister Robinson. Thank God for you all being on this evening. This message, as I stated before, is a warning, an insight about a holiday that is inoculating. Inoculating means introducing into the mind and indoctrinating people into the occult, in which the scriptures specifically deters us from participating in this celebration of evil, but rather expose the event for what it is. Before Ephesians, the fifth chapter and 11 verse says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. So all the things that we've done, and especially in times past when we go to trunk and treats, things of nature, that's in celebration of darkness. It gives an open door. It gives an opportunity, a portal or opening for the enemy to give homage to that of the occult, of that of the demonic, at that for which is against the word of God. It's about the celebration of darkness. I cannot stress that enough. You don't want to dress up as a devil or a demon or a witch on this day. For the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter and the 22nd verse, abstain from all, the Bible says this, abstain. This is in the New Testament for those that just only believe that the New Testament applies. It says abstain from all appearance of evil. 
We should not look like the kingdom of darkness. This grieves the spirit of God. Let me say that again. We should not look like the kingdom of darkness. This grieves the spirit of God. For the celebration of Halloween growing in prominence is no coincidence. As scripture warned about the great falling away and many turning from Christ during the last days as an occult resurgence where would ensue as a sign of the forefront. And that's where we are right now. It's establishing the platform for the Antichrist to come and to, and to establish himself. And when we see that and we see the mystery of iniquity already starting to, with that for which is about to come forth, we know that we're in the end times. And mystery Babylon, which is the new world order. When you have an opportunity, please read at home, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, 1st through the eighth verse, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, ninth through the 12th verse, and also Revelation, the 13th chapter, first through the eighth verse. Jesus said in Matthew, the 24th chapter, ninth through the 10th verse, 24th through the 25th verse, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Christ delivered the redeemed believer from Satan's kingdom. So how can we celebrate the bondage which you came from? For we were delivered as described in Acts, the 26th chapter and the 18th verse to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That was the objective of Christ and his great power for first John, for John, first John, the third chapter in the eighth verse states, he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Colossians, the first chapter, the 13th through the 14th verse says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And then the following chapter in that same book of Colossians, that same epistle, the second chapter, the 15th verse, and guess what Jesus did? And we're trying to go back to it. Jesus, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them open. He wasn't conjoined with them. He was not connected with them. He made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. Thank you, Lord. And so let's talk about the origin of this holiday. The traditions of Halloween are based on the worship of false gods, contact with the dead, foretelling the future, and communing with evil spirits. Let me say that again. The traditions of Halloween are based upon the worship of false gods, contact with the dead, foretelling the future, and communing with evil spirits. Halloween was originally a Celtic. Some people say Celtic. That's why we said in English. But the way that it's, it's supposed to be pronounced is Celtic. Celtic festival called Samhain for the dead that was celebrated on the last day of the Celtic or the Celtic year, October the 31st. The customs and superstitions of Halloween also include those that were celebrated throughout the ages. Regarded as a propitious, which is a favorable time for examining, and this is what they believe, and this is why so much divination and witchcraft and sorcery goes on during that day, signs or warnings of the future were the greatest to be able to foretell during that time. Celtic priests, 
This was, and then also the Celts also believed that the spirits of the dead revisited their earthly homes on that evening. And then for several hundred years before Christ, the Celts inhabited what is now France and Germany, England, Scotland, and Ireland. Celtic priests were called Druids. These people were eventually conquered by the Romans. The ancient Druids had a three-day celebration at the beginning of November. They believed that on the last day of October, spirits of the dead roamed abroad, and they lighted bonfires to drive them away. The observances connected with Halloween are thought to have originated among the ancient Druids, who believed that on that evening, someone, the Lord of the dead, called for hosts of evil spirits. The Druids customarily lit great fires on Halloween. You wonder why Detroit and many other locations around the country and the world dealt with fires and extensive rape. Well, it's associated with the customs of the Druids. How we used to have Devil's Night, that's associated with it. That's why there's so much in regards to those that would light fires during that time. Apparently for the purpose of warding, it wasn't to ward off evil spirits. That's what they thought, but it was to entice them. And then there's a spirit behind this celebration. For behind the worship of false gods are devils. For the Bible says in Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, 16th through the 17th verse, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods, little g, demonic spirits, whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Greek and Roman writings about the Druids dwell heavily on their frequent and barbaric human sacrifices. The ancient Irish texts say little about human sacrifices, but details the Druids' use of magic to raise storms. See, there's the enemy has power. He doesn't have all power, but the enemy has power. Remember when Moses, when he threw, when the rod was placed down onto the ground and it became a serpent, Janus and Jambers also were able to do the same thing. But that for which is of the true and living God is more powerful than anything for what he has created. Here it is. They came up and they did raise storms, lay curses on places, killed using spells and created magical obstacles they were a class of priests who ruled as judges and that's an issue that we have even today judges philosophers and mediators between false gods and man through occult terror and human sacrifices for centuries there's no coincidence why when we had the stimulating sunday series at ke the rise of the new age movement and secret societies were those who were revered and touted and respected were the Stoics, the Gnostics. The Druids were Gnostics. Stoics, those that believe that they could be as God. Those who have the knowledge, those that have the knowledge, those are the ones that controlled individuals, just as we have right now in regards to the BLM. And then there are those that are even Gnostic on the Christian right who increasingly sit as judges and philosophers and mediators and counselors and this is also troubling, and we talked about it extensively, and even preachers. Davies, however, a 16th century writer who traced his family lineage directly back to Druid priests who fought against Caesar, clearly describes the human sacrifices of his ancestors and the secret sacrifices still performed, still to this day, regularly by the Druids, especially during his time on Halloween. For thousands of years, Druid priests have conducted diabolical worship ceremonies in which cats and horses and sheep and oxen and including human beings and other sacrifices were rounded up, stuffed into wicker cages. Wicca, when it talks about the Bible, Rasha, that word wicked, that's where that comes from. That means that's where wicked can, comes from. With witchcraft, with witches, it means to be twisted. The Bible clearly talks about that for which many of those that practiced that demonic belief during this particular time. A form of this was the wicker man. That's why that movie was so popular. That's why in regards to the wicker man that is done over Nevada is so popular because it's associated with the occult. It's associated with demonic possession. 
the wicker man was a large wicker stature reportedly used by the ancient druids, the priests of Celtic paganism, for sacrifice by burning it in an effigy, which is a model of a person. And so the lighting of the wicker man is lighting to the Burning Man festivals in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. These human and animal sacrifices were apparently required to appease Sowen and keep the spirits from harming him. By 47 AD, Rome finally defeated the Druids in Britain and outlawed human sacrifices. The few remaining Druids went underground. I believe God rose up Rome to do that because there was a proliferation of this practice and this detectable practice and God allowed them to be defeated. And then today a growing group of people claiming to be of direct Druid descent still practice their religion. And there are still reports of human sacrifice. Those in England still perform ceremonies at Stonehenge, where within three miles of that site are 350 funeral miles that contain countless human sacrifices. Very little archaeological evidence of the Druids have been found, but there is excellent agreement between the Roman and Irish documents. Both clearly state that the knowledge of the Druids was never committed to writing but passed from generation to generation by oral teaching. This was to protect their secrets. In his writings, Davies indicates that he came under so much persecution that happens when you reveal the truth by his family for putting in writing his information about the Druids. The same is true today. Nothing is put into writing. However, the Druids continue on secretly with much of the same traditions. The Druids, an order of priests in ancient Gaul and Britain, believe that on Halloween, as I stated, ghosts and spirits and fairies, and that's why you got to be careful with things that are associated with Disney when they put focus on the occult, like fairies and spirits. We got to, they have a movie that's about to come up that's about to deal with that associated with spirits and ghosts and witches and elves. Yes, elves too came out to harm people. They were actually demonic. They came to commit bodily harm. They thought the cat was sacred and believed that cats had once been human beings, but were changed as a punishment for evil. These are the demonic beliefs of the Druids. From these Druidic beliefs come the present day use of witches and goats, uh, excuse me, ghosts and cats in Halloween festival, also goats too. And then Halloween was the night for the universal walking about of all sorts of spirits and fairies and ghosts all of whom had liberty on that night. What they were really dealing with was occulted demonic activity. They were dealing with demons and familiar spirits. That for which has been described in the book of Ephesians. And so Druids offer innocence. That's why we shouldn't have our children participating in this day because we're actually offering our children, our innocent children, children and also in regards to virgins as other, other than criminals, because they did the same thing to criminals as well when prisoners of war or those severe uh, se severe diseases as sacrifices. They believe that the only, guess what they said, and they want your children. That's why Halloween is right behind Christmas in regards to spending. I saw so many people trying to buy alcohol, which is pharmakia, that for which God forbids, because now it's associated with strong drink, but it's associated with drunkenness. Oh, that's another subject on its own. That's all, all alcohol, especially all alcohol that is made now is a pharmacia. And so I saw so many people, folks, even though we're in the midst of COVID, they still drinking, they still carousing, still doing things. And especially on in worship of this holiday, which opens the door to the occult and possession and vexation and oppression. And so they believe that the only fruit of the body, they're talking about your children, offer to sacrifice. Offered to Satan was for the sin of the soul. That is demonic, it's blasphemous. And this is found in the book. And I always believe in giving context for when you deal with matters like this, especially historical context, found in the book of the two Babylons by Hislop, page 232. The practice of sacrificing children still occurs inconspicuously, as there was a leaked report by the UK's. Time Online, you can find it in June 2015, 
that came out about trafficking boys. That's why you're seeing so much human trafficking going on. It's not just in regards to in regards to sexuality, but it's also in regards to sacrifice from Africa to Britain for nefarious reasons, including sexual abuse and human sacrifice by fundamentalist sex, whose members believe that their ritual killing will enhance spells. And then let me share this with you. That's why, even in the sense of committing abortion, abortion is a sacrifice, is demonic, is murder, is killing, is against the Ten Commandments. And then this is why abortion is so popular. It's associated with this whole thing because of people being under the guise of rules of occultic practices. For many, you do so to absolve an error, as I told you with the fruit of the body, what the Druids did, or for ill-gotten gain, position like the witch Stevie Nicks, who that's uh, in regards to Fleetwood Mac, who said her success of this group and her, her success on her own would not have occurred unless she committed an abortion and she was happy about it. That's why in regards to the way that she sings and even the way that she appears, she appears as a witch. And then, which is abortion, which is the killing of her child. That child would have been 41 today. I think about that. 41 today, if she had not committed that detestable practice, it's an abomination to God. And then this mindset and impact started. And guess how she got this mindset and how she was inoculated into the occult. Her parents bought her a witch outfit for Halloween in her primary years. And it impacted her so it included it into her music her way of life and how she proceeded in life and then even including to her music and she took even that outfit and made it black here's why some of the things that she would wear and do so it just lets you know that when you open your children up especially to halloween and you give them all these costumes and you give them these things it influences them for the future and some do not make it back and they go full-fledged into the occult and then the next series of information that I would like to share with you comes from stories past, done centuries ago and confirmed by those that were former and current occultists as Druid teaching was oral. What also leads credence that the information that is to be provided is the semblance and congruency of Druid worship of sowing with Baal, Baal, well many people know him as Baal, but Baal, Moloch which required child sacrifice, along with the use of the hexagram. That's why you're seeing an increase, a rise of that, which is likened to the star of Rephim, described in Amos, the fifth chapter, 26 through the 27 verse. Do you not know God dealt with that for which we are seeing with the occult, with many people in their stickers, especially during this day, in regards to the hexagram or the pentagram, God dealt with this matter. The Druids also sacrificed victims by shooting them with arrows, impaling them on stakes, stabbing them, slitting their throats over cauldrons, and then drinking their blood. This is from regards to Harper's Encyclopedia, a mystical and paranormal experience, page 167. And if you look at this slide, that's Molech, another name for Ball, and he's taking the child, and the man is placing this individual, they're probably a priest, of ball is giving the child over to the fire there was a king that also did the same as well there was multiple kings in the bible that worship ball and that gave their children unto the fire and god sent judgment and the things in these detestable prayers is still going on today here's why innocent blood is crying out that's why he's going to send judgment and wrath very soon it's getting late in the day and instead of us turning to the true and living god we're becoming stagnant we're becoming deafened we're becoming tone dead we've become in a sense of hard-headed stubborn in our ways and we're being hardened to iniquity the trick-or-treat custom was created by the druids when they went to a home and demanded a child or virgin for sacrifice the victim was the Druid's treat. In exchange, they would leave a jack o' lantern, get rid of every jack o' lantern and every Halloween festivity, anything that is associated 
with Halloween. Get it out your house because it brings about demonic spirits. It brings about a demonic presence. We have many that are leaving jack-o'-lanterns on their porches, not knowing that a jack-o'-lantern with a lighted candle, guess what it was made of? It had human fat on the inside to prevent those inside from being killed. This is what they believe. This is what that practice came from to prevent those inside from being killed by demons that night. We know it does not do that. It actually inoculates you. It gives possession to people. And so when the demands were not met, the Druids placed a trick on their door by a symbolic hex. Also associated with this practice, the modern day tricks in candy and other consumables that have items, and this is why that, that's where that came from. I'll never forget, especially 30 years ago, it was at an all time high where people were putting tricks in candy. That's where they came from. It came from the Druid practices of the occult. That's why they would put tricks in candy and other consumables, including pharmacia, drugs, that have items that can cause bodily harm or even death. In ancient Rome, the festival of Pomona, the goddess of fruits and garden, and gardens occurred about this same time of year. It was an occasion of rejoicing associated with the harvest and nuts and apples as symbols of the winter store of fruit were roasted before huge bonfires. Apples have been illustratively as used. There's nothing wrong with an apple, but apples have been used. If you ever know that, an uh, apple in the season that has been symbolized shows a hexagram. And they utilize that for that purpose. There's nothing wrong with apples. You can eat apples. You can enjoy the fruit for which God has given us. But the problem is, is when it's been manipulated for demonic purposes. Apples have been illustratively used as the forbidden fruit, as the root of humanity's falling out with God. If an individual would cut an apple in half, you will find what looks like a five pointed star or pentagram often associated with satanism and the occult it is used in many spells and rituals and if you can't share this because a lot of people need to know about this and has been mentioned in stories throughout history the apple was considered sacred by many societies and has been used in divination spells there's no Coincidence, when it came to the book cover of Twilight, it is a person having an apple in their hands. Apples are also associated with Gnosticism. And so the apple was considered sacred by many societies and has been used in divination spells, still used today by many pagan groups. And so during Halloween, especially during the celebrations, had the sinister, there's always a sinister aspect. There's no dividing from it because it was not of God. God never created this holiday. Man did. And the things that they did was always associated being led by the devil and coming up that for which is of divination and that for which is greatly opposed to the word of God. Had the sinister aspect of the belief that ghosts and witches were roaming about their lands. And so during Halloween, people try to foretell the future on that night by performing such rites as, guess what? Jumping over lighted candles. This is where that nursery rhyme of divination came from. Jack be nimble. That's where it's derived from. Jumping candlesticks was a form of fortune telling and a sport. Supposedly good luck was said to be signaled by the clearing the candle without extinguishing the flame. So all these things that we would do, even in the school, all these things will be associated with the occult. And what people don't realize is inoculating you, is unbeknownst to many of us, is getting us to be basically comfortable with that of demonic practices. In the British Isles, great bonfires blaze for the Celtic Festival of Sowing. There will be laughing bands of geysers. You know what geysers are? Geysers were young people disguised in grotesque masks, carved lanterns from turnips. They didn't just use in regards to a, a pumpkin at the time, but they would use also other types of fruit, but including turnips and carry them through the villages. And later centuries or latter centuries, the it was the opening of the new year and was the occasion for setting huge bonfires on hilltops 
to drive away evil spirits. The souls of the dead were supposed to revisit their homes on that day. So you got necromancing going on. And the annual fall festival acquires sinister connotations with evil spirits and ghosts and witches and goblins and black cats and demons wandering about. And so after the Romans conquered Britain, they added to Halloween features of the Roman Harvest Festival. That's why I mentioned Pomona. And that's why it's all together held on November 1st. And guess what? That's what they did in honor of Pomona, goddess of fruits of trees. And so traces of the Roman Harvest Festival survive in the custom, prevailing both in the United States and Great Britain of playing games involving fruits such as ducking for apples in a tub of water. Of similar origin is the use of hollowed out pumpkins carved to resemble grotesque faces and lit by candles placed inside. Divinations during this demonic celebration dealt with, and guess what many would do during this time? They would go ahead and have divination associated with marriage, weather, and coming fortunes. This is an excerpt of a witch. Her name of her book is Halloween, October Festival of the Dead by Jill Dakota. She says that as much fun as it is for children to get great bags of sweets at Halloween, the origins of this time of year are sacred and meaningful. That's what she says. It is the time when nature appears to die. See, the enemy is a counterfeit. He knows that during this time, remember I talked about in regards to the Feast of Trumpets, which is the celebration of the new year, all the way to the Feast of Tabernacles. That's around harvest time, the harvest cycle. They all represent who Jesus Christ is. And so what does the enemy do during Halloween, during this time? He takes this time to celebrate himself and to state that that is the time of the celebration of the new year. As much fun as it is for children, that's what she said, to get great bags of sweets at Halloween, the origins of this time of year are sacred and meaningful. This is what she believes. It is the time when nature appears to die. So it becomes natural to consider those who have passed away to the spirit world. Bring out pictures and guess what? Just like what we have right now with these demonic groups that are coming out and saying that we need to connect to our ancestors. There's no coincidence why it's at an all time high during this election. This is what these groups and organizations are doing. Bring out pictures of your ancestors and retell the old family story. See, we're being set up to those who haven't heard them yet. Remind yourself where you came from. See, those that are trying to say that they're in support of racial or to deal with issues behind or associated with racial inequality, but yet they're trying to connect us back to paganism. And look, see, tell me, retelling the old family story. Remind yourself of where you came from. We look within and easily see, guess what? Inner communication. This is all associated with Gnosticism. Halloween is the perfect time to link the deepening of emotion with finding new ways to search for interior wisdom. Likewise, this is a this is what she says. This is a witch, a fun and exciting holiday. There's theatrics, there's costuming, and there's acting out new, guess what, personas, new personalities. That's demonic spirits that's being possessed. Express our, guess what she says? Oh, this is why we got people that have issues with bipolarism and all type of mental health issues. That's associated with demonic possession. If it's not regards to medically induced, it is demonic possession and acting out of new personas. That's why we got so many people per depressed as well. Express our, guess what, ability to change. So you can be possessed multiply. Here are some ideas for integrating this holy day with, guess what she says, with homeschooling lessons, methods of inner communication with divination tools. She says tarot. She says palmistry. She says astrology. She says dream journaling. Archetypes, talking about fairy tales associated with the occult. Storytelling of the dark ages, the medieval era. Issues about superstition and eternal truth. She's talking about that for witches of the demonic. Skeletons, the skeletal system, organs, anatomy, issues about health. There's a reason why there's so many people put out skulls and skeletons and that of the anatomy of the body during this time. It's all, it's all associated with the occult and to lead you to vexation, oppression, and possession. 
an excerpt from the book, A Happy Halloween History, The Origins by Ron Moonstone stated that sowing was the new year to the Celts. In the Celtic belief system, turning points such as the time between one day and the next, the meeting of the sea and the shore, or turning of one year into the next were seen as magical times. The turning of the year was the most potent of these times. This was the time when the veil between worlds, they've said that this is the time to connect to the spirit world. That for which God does not want us to do was at its thinnest. You're trying to be just like Saul, who ended up with disastrous results, was at its thinnest, and the living could communicate with the beloved dead. And this is the name of the place, is Tir Nan Ong. That's associated with the Celtic practice and belief of this place of eternal youth and have their form of, of heaven. But what it really does is connect you to that for which is of the kingdom of darkness. And these are also some of the traditions associated with Halloween. jack o lanterns the apparently harmless lighted pumpkin face or jack o lantern is an ancient symbol of a damn soul. So when you go in, you put a jack o lantern on your house or you put it in your window or you put it on your place of work or you got these little things in your car and they're jack o lanterns what it says is an ancient symbol of a soul that has been damned. Jack-o'-lanterns were named for a man called Jack who could not enter heaven or hell. As a result, he was doomed to wander in darkness with his lantern until, guess what, Judgment Day. In America, it's a pumpkin, but in Europe, it's often a turnip. Large beet or potato, a rutabaga, even a skull with a candle in it. The fearsome face of the jack-o'-lantern was representative of the god of the dead, Soen, who would drive off, supposedly would drive off, but what it is is, a, is attracting spirits abroad that night. As glimmering lights flickered over an English marsh or an Irish ball, people imagined dead souls had returned to earth. They would place the jack-o'-lantern on posts and in windows to ward off the spirits of the dead on Halloween. Then you have jack o then you have trick or treat. And you see how you have these children, even in this side, they're wearing that for witches of fairies. They're wearing that of vampires. They're wearing that of ghosts. They're wearing that of, in regards to demons. And you see the association of a, of a soul that has been damned with the children. And that's the focus, is to inoculate your children so they can lead them to damnation, to perdition, to destruction. The modern custom of trick or treat began in Ireland hundreds of years ago. A group of farmers went from house to house begging food for the village Halloween festivities in the name of their what? Ancient gods. Supposed good luck, but what it is, it leads you to damnation. As according to Deuteronomy, the 28, you bring about curses upon your life, was promised to generous donors, and threats were made against those who would not give. Thus, the, these ancient Pagan traditions continue today as youngsters masquerading as ghosts and skeletons and demons go trick-or-treating, begging in a sense for food while promising to refrain. Guess what? You're, you're putting your children in the position of doing something that is demonic because what they would do was promise to refrain from evil deeds. And then mask and costumes carry a long history in the occult and demon possession. Masks are context. That's why you gotta be careful what type of mask you're wearing because if you're wearing some of the demon, you're wearing some of a witch, some of a warlock, some of a witch, some that's associated with the occult, guess what? Their context, their openings and portals to the spirit world to invite the spirit to possess them. So when your children wear these things associated with demons, you're actually telling the enemy as a symbol, as a sign, just like a hex was, I'm open and I'm available, and my child is available to you to possess. That's why children act the way that they do during this day and time, when those that are participants and associated with it. In rituals, a person wearing a mask or of a god or a spirit often feels possessed by that supernatural being. That's in world books. In 2005, page 263, to disguise themselves from the spirits, people donned costumes trying to look like the evil spirits or look terrible enough 
to scare them away. You also have the heightened awareness of astrology, especially during this time. It was heavily practiced as everyone wanted predictions for the coming new year. Traditionally, they read the sacrificial bones. That's why you got to be careful having skeletons and that for which of a human anatomy out on your yard because witches can go and use that. So let's read the sacrificial bones and guess what? Entrails of sacrifice. Then you have apple bobbing. Ducking for apples was a marriage divination. We thought it was just in fun and games, but it was actually a marriage divination. The first person to bite an apple would suppose, this is supposed what they would believe, would be the first person to marry in the coming year. Another segment of information known amongst those in occultic practices regarding the Druids before the ceremony begun, human sacrifices were given the chance to live if they could get an apple out of a cauldron. I want you to listen to this very clearly. This is where it derived from. Before the Druids would commence with their demonic practices, human sacrifices were given the chance to live if they could get an apple out of a cauldron or boiling liquid on their first attempt without using their hands. If they were successful, then they would be free, although they would receive severe burns to the face and neck, which would likely have a lifelong effect. If they were unsuccessful, then they would be killed on the spot. Anton LaVey, the author of the Satanic Bible and high priest of the Church of Satan states, Satanists consider Halloween the most important day of the year. Satanic, occultic, and witchcraft powers are at their highest potency level. Satan and his powers are at their best that night. He also stated, that I'm glad, this is what he said. And this man was possessed the things that he came up with and don't believe in regards to the church or those that are Luciferian say they don't believe in Satan, no. The enemy is the father of lies. And so he's going to use things to give you as a rule to make you believe that it's only in principle. No, these folks believed in the enemy. He said, I also, he also stated, I'm glad that Christian parents, this is what he said, the man that came up with the satanic Bible, he said that was based on Crowley's beliefs and practices. Would Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night of the year? Let me say it again. He said, I'm glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. What does the Bible say regarding the celebration of Halloween? God is clearly against the revelry and homage to Halloween. The worship of false gods is strictly forbidden. Exodus, the 20th chapter, second through the third verse. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, the 16th verse. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Psalm the 81st chapter and the ninth verse says, There shall no strange God be in thee. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is what he said. There shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shall thou worship any strange God. And then 1 John 5 and 21 says, Little children. Keep yourselves from idols. That's John the Revelator saying this through the illumination of the Holy Spirit. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Customs associated with idol worship is forbidden. The Lord warns that he expelled those who committed abominations associated with this holiday, whom inhabited the promised land for engaging in such detestable practices. He warned the people of Israel that he would do the same to them should they imitate their evil works. In Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, 9 through the 14th verses, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn. See, we should be learning these practices and doing these things. Learn to do. I'm talking about learning to do, not to learn 
of them because he abreast the people. But we are not to do, to learn to do these practices after the abominations of these nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that marketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or which divination is seeking knowledge of the future or unknown by supernatural means outside the word of God. An enchanter is a person who uses magic or spells. And this is what the Bible says. Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. A necromancer is a person that practice of magic involving communication of the dead. For all that do these things, this is what the Bible says, are an abomination unto the Lord. We shouldn't be going to the fortune teller. We shouldn't be going to that for which is a gypsy and going to them and trying to find out our future. Leave astrology and tarot cards alone. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. That's a word you don't hear much. Perfect, that means to be mindful of your ways and to be careful on how you proceed in life and that you live according to the word of God. For these nations which thou possess, hearken unto, guess what he said, those that were driven out, those that lost their lives, for these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times, unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God have not, he didn't tell you to suffer. He said, have not suffered thee to do so. So why do we have witches and water? Why do we have saints wearing witchcraft? That for which is witchcraft and masks and costumes during this day. It's not a play thing. When you put those things on, you open up the door to possession and also the curses and also what shall be ultimately damnation unto your life. Because he has not suffered thee to do so. As a warning, to be mindful of those who are involved with the occult may produce demonic manifestations of power and should not be considered negligible or ignored. Consider what Moses encountered, as I told you before, when facing sorcerers and Janus and Jambers. I'm going to read that scripture to you because you got some people that don't believe the enemy has power. He has power. In Exodus, the seventh chapter. 10 through the 12th verse. And Moses and Aaron went in, went in unto Pharaoh. And they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron had cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants. And it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh, guess what he did? He said, because he knows of their power. Remember, they can control the weather. They can do all type of things. And there's some people that have been cursed unto death because they're not in right standing with God. And then Pharaoh, also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their what? Enchantments. That means they also created a serpent for they cast down every man his rod and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod, showing the power and authority of God, swallowed up their rods. Why are we even worshiping that for which is of his creation? Remember, God created Satan. And no creation is greater than his creator. No creation. And God levies punishment for idolatry. Look at Leviticus, the 20th chapter, first through the eighth verse. But let me skip down. I want to, because of the sake of time, I want you to read verses one through four when you get when you get a chance and opportunity. But listen to this for those that are associated with Molech and those that put their children to the fire and do anything that's associated with these practices. This is what he said. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family. And guess what the Bible said? And will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. And the soul that turneth after such, this is what the Bible said. This is not land. This is what the Bible says, as have familiar spirits and have their wizards to go a whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul and cut him off among his people. Guess what God said, the true and living God, sanctify yourself, not sanctify me. You can't sanctify leaders. 
You got to only sanctify yourself. Get yourself right. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. Meaning, depart from a nigga. He'll do the redemptive work, but he wants you to withdraw. Come out from among them and be ye separate, not associated with these practices. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. For I am the Lord. He's stating who he is. I am. When you hear I am, that's a redemption, but also his omnipotence, his power. I am the Lord, your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord, which sanctify you. Leviticus, the 19th chapter and the 31st verse says, regard not them that have familiar spirits. There's a reason I'm coming on during this time, because I'm trying to deal with these demonic spirits that many are going to participate in at 12 o'clock. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. Remember the punishment rendered upon Saul for his participation in an action celebrated and occurs immensely during Halloween that was described in 1 Chronicles, the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. So Saul died for his transgression. What was his transgression? Which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that, guess what, had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. That's a conjunction for things that he did that he committed against the Lord. And then guess what? He said that transgression. It mentioned it, transgression. And then when in conjunction with that, it said for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit. That led to his damnation and to ultimately eternal perdition. Accursed things in your possession cause you to fall. And when you ever have an opportunity, take a look at Joshua, the seventh chapter, 10th through the 13th verse, for consider the judgment and consequences of Achan's actions. I'm going to tell you this. I'll read these first two verses of it. You can re read the remainder at home later on after this particular series. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. He didn't tell you to stay there. Many times we're praying over things where God told us directly what to do according to the word. You don't need prayer. You need to obey. Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? He's asking a question. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. But they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. That's why they didn't even, first of all, they dealt with a significant loss in lives is because of Achan's actions because he was associated and brought into the camp that for which was a curse and God told them not to have and to, to destroy. Satan tries to appear as an angel of light to false knowledge and doctrine. He is constantly trying to be a counterfeit substitute to the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 11 chapter, the 14 verses and no marvel, but Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And then it says in John the 8th chapter and the 12th verse, then spake Jesus again unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Be mindful of third John, the first chapter and the 11th verse. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil have not seen God. And so the celebrations of Halloween has been one of the methodologies the enemy has used to lead many astray from the God of the Bible and encourage the involvement of a great number of people around the globe to participate in demonic pagan practices. Wicca is one of the fastest growing religions in the United States. That's from MTV News. The increase in these antichrist practices have created spiritual portals around the world to usher in perilous. That's what with perilous times, that means fierce times. The fierce spirit that the man of Gadara had, Christ said that this would be perilous times. There would be people under much possession and unclean spirits with an increase in demonic vexation, oppression, and possession. Hence why we have seen an increase of major 
major picture movies associated. We're going to talk about that tonight with occult practices and also television shows throughout its inception. Throughout nearly a century, Hollywood has hired witches and Satanists as advisors who ensure the authenticity of the production sacrifices, spells, and curse. No saint should be watching horror movies. Even when I used to watch them and I used to laugh at them and think they were funny, but the thing that I was having issues with, it was trying to bring doubt when there would be trouble that would arise, a trial, a tribulation that I would face. It would try to bring doubt to me of the power and the authority of God. Even when you watch those things, it shows that there's not the presence of God and neither his sovereignty when it comes to matters. And many times they try to make God evil and the enemy good. That's why you have shirts that you can buy at Spencer's. And that's why God sent COVID to shut all this down and to get people's attention. But people, young people are buying that shirt that you see over to the left that says activities for children. Let's summon demons. Then one of the biggest Ouija boards, which no saints should have in their house. Ouija boards bring about demonic spirits. You're not going to be talking to your lost loved ones. You're going to be talking to the familiar spirits of your lost loved ones. And guess what? They're going to lead you to perdition and they're going to bring out a vexation and oppression and ultimately possession. And listen to even this. They were talking about the recommendation for young people to use a Ouija board. Guess what? Remember, I said they want your children. It's at eight years old. But you need to be, guess what? To In order they want your children, it's okay for them to play with it at eight years old. But you need to be 21 to drink alcohol. But that lets you know that they want you to inoculate it in a way that you, is unbeknownst to you at a young age. One of the earliest examples of these movies, as I talked about before, is Rosemary's Baby. That movie still to this day is one of the most demonic films that's ever created. And I'll tell you why. The book written by Jewish atheist, Ur Levin, Rosemary Baby was made into a film in 1968, starring Mia Farrow as the victim mother, John Cavestis, Casavetis, thank you, Casavetis, as her opportunic husband who sells her out to the devil and Ruth Gordon and Sidney Blackmer as the ringleader witches of a coven. Much of the shooting was done at the Dakota, which is New York's Gothic residence of the rich and famous that had occult incidents happening over the years. And so Levin's plot deals with devil worshipers and who call themselves witches. The evil coven, coven is not composed of stereotypical. We got witches and warlocks that even come into the church. They don't have pointy hats. They don't wear things that seem like would be with the coat, but they are unbeknownst to many. If you're not without having the discernment of spirits, they come in with a purpose and a plan. And so just they're showing you what witches really look like. The evil coven is not composed of stereotypical pointy-nosed witches, but of friendly neighbors, prestigious doctors, and distinguished individuals. The realism of the movie forces the viewers to ponder on the existence of such groups and their importance of these various groups and what they do that are behind closed doors as they are elegant and rational and intelligent and are connected to important people. That's why we got to be careful about joining fraternities and sororities and secret societies. They follow the devil's instructions to arrange for him to, to be with a woman. This is demonic, whom he has chosen to conceive and to deliver the Antichrist. The name Rosemary has historically been associated with the Virgin Mary, with a made-up story about her spreading her cloak over a white blossom rosemary bush. That's where it all comes from, Rosemary's baby, when she was resting, turning it blue. That's a, that's a folktale that's not even found in scripture, is not accurate, is not correct. And the story takes place in New York City in 1966. Rosemary and Guy Woodhouse are young newlyweds in search of a new apartment. Guy is a mediocre actor struggling to succeed, but barely making it in part bit parts and commercials, who becomes quite successful. Because why? He sold himself to do iniquity as Ahab, as the Bible described. Successful in the movie industry at the assist in a dastardly deal with his wife. The Bible says in Mark 8 and 36, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain 
the whole world and lose his own soul. And at the sinister looking Bradford building, Rosemary falls in love with an apartment and persuades Guy to rent it. Unbeknownst to Rosemary, their neighbors, many and, and also Roman, seduce Guy with promise of professional successes in exchange for sat satanic, basic copulation of Rosemary with the devil. Rosemary is drugged by a chocolate mousse. Here it is, pharmacia. You see even how this movie even puts in the minds of those that are watching, is God dead? Is God alive? That's a Time magazine that they're doing. They're trying to inoculate you about the enemy and about you to believe that there is not a God, but you can believe in a devil. And then one of the most heinous acts of the movie, these witches stand around her chanting while this inhuman monster with human with animal eyes and reptilian skin takes hold of her. This is demonic. Anton LaVey, the reason why it's associated with this and why he's wearing something that's reptilian, as you see at the bottom of the corner of the presentation, is because he knows and those that are the producers and those that they work with, that is a representation of Satan because as used in scripture, serpent represents Satan. Hence why he's reptilian. And so guess who worked with him? I just kind of showed him in passing. Anton LaVey. That same gentleman, the founder of the Church of Satan, he played the devil in the movie. All the actions of this reptilian monster is him. And he served as a consultant on other movies. And in the movie, the kind of trusting Rosemary will be sort of like a demonic, dark and black Virgin Mary. I'm not talking about in the sense of ethnicity. I'm talking about soul, bearing within her womb the child of Satan. The baby, and guess what? In the movie, is so slick. The baby is born in June 1966, which is numerically 666, a.k.a. the number of the beast, as predicted in New Testament book of Revelation. Religious counterculture was already swirling. The Church of Satan was soon to be established in San Francisco. And in April 1966, Time magazine had just famously asked on its cover, is God dead? And then even at the end of the movie, with the witch's encouragement, she begins to mother this, meaning basically support the Antichrist, is to support the direction and the focus. And this is what they're trying to do, just as what the enemy will do, especially during this time, as the rise of the, because the Antichrist spirit is already here. And we already have Antichrist. The Antichrist is not here, but those that have come up and sprung forth are trying to establish the platform of the Antichrist. And guess what? She submits to it. That's what they're trying to show and want you to do. Submit to Mystery Babylon. Submit to the guise of the enemy. To change your mindset about the enemy. That there's no hope and you have to give in to it. Holding on to a naive hope that you exert. And this is what we have issues with. We try to change that for which is of Satanism. That for which is the cult. That can't be redeemed because that never came from God. And then this is what was happening. She began, and this is what, guess what occurs? After the fact, the Antichrist, as he comes into the world, gains a foothold in the world. And so this movie captured the shifting mindset. And this is where people are now. That's why NBC did the Rosemary's Baby. That's why they did that series a few years back. They're trying to inoculate you into the cult and to accept the enemy. And to accept the Antichrist as God. And so this movie captured the shifting mindset of people's acceptance into the occult that was a part of the counterfeit free love movement. Here it is as a, the, the civil rights movement that was based and found in the church. The counterfeit to that was the free love movement because it was associated with, it wasn't talking about the love of Christ, but the love of doing what do as thou will. That's what that was all about, of Aleister Crowley taking on drugs, getting into all type of prom promiscuity and lasciviousness that was based on scripture. This is, And this is what I was saying to you, that there was part of the counterfeit free love movement in the late 60s that was devised to counter the civil rights movement that was based on scripture and out of the church. It was an occult manifesto hurling a new era, Rosemary's Babies, Aleister Crowley's, Child of the New Eon. Those that are K know about 
Alistair Crowley. He's the one that has influenced. That's why we have the spread, that spirit of pharmacia, which the book of Revelation talks about how it spread all around the world. He is the one that's the biggest prognosticator of it. You wonder why America's had a war on drugs. They've been unsuccessful because there's a spiritual connotation and connection to it. And then the movie director, Roman Polanski, he was a rape. He was a child rapist. He pled guilty in 1978. These are the individuals that are coming up with these movies to raping a 13 year old child. This is what that man did. And then speaking of the devil, many of Polanski's movies reveal his affinity for Satanism and sexual perversion. In his movie, Rosemary's Baby, we just discussed, Rosemary is depicted as being taken advantage of by Satan in a dream and let her bear his child. So he's fascinated by that for which is demonic of doing what he did. Polanski is the one who actually hired Anton LaVey as a consultant for the movie. Do you not know he also did another demonic movie called The Night Gate, starring Johnny Depp? Polanski again promotes sexual perversion and satanic sexual perversion always goes with demonic rituals and rites. It always does. Polanski actually called The Night Gate an advertisement, and this is what he said for hell. This movie not only ushered in the age of horrors associated with Crowley, but setting the stage for the appearance of the Antichrist. But this was a turning point in America departing from the precepts. And that's why we've had trouble just increasing and it's on the rise. That's why God sent that for which is of the beginning of sorrows, COVID, Bishop COVID, to get our attention because we've been departing from the precepts and the statutes and judgments of the scripture. Rosemary's baby is anathema, it's detestable to God, bringing about curses to the participants and those connected to the film. And then Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, 10th through the 11th verse, talks about that, that anyone that is associated with, or anything that's found amongst you of a divination or observant of terms or a necromancer. And we talked about what happened with Saul when he committed these detestable practices. And take note what he said in Hosea 4, the fourth chapter and the sixth verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. And this is what he said. This is what people don't understand. When you reject the word of God, when you reject the word of God, you desire and don't do what you want to do. He says, I will also forget thy children. You know why children are being shot at a an alarming rate while we having so many children going through human trafficking, while we're seeing so many things being done because the children are not covered. Men and women are not in right standing with God. They're not under the auspice of marriage. They're involved with detestable practices and things of their cult, such as pharmacia, which includes weed and drugs, and drugs includes alcohol and many other things that are not of God. And then this is why we're seeing our children dealing with the consequences of our action. Why? Because God said he will forget thy children. And then look what happened to those that participated in the movie. The consequences of iniquity. The composer of Rosemary's Baby Score, that's the first gentleman in the circle, Kursko Komita, experienced an intense demise. In autumn of 1968, then 37-year-old Kamita was roughhousing at a party after this movie had been produced when he fell off a rocky cliff and into a four-month coma. The same affliction Levin's witches used to kill Rosemary's suspicious friend. See, God is not mocked. The same thing that they showed in the movie, I want you to catch this, the same affliction Levin's witches used to kill Rosemary's suspicious friend in the book. He died that same way. Comita never regained consciousness and died in Poland the following year. Then in 1969, producer William Castle, sick with worry from the hate mail he received constantly, was suddenly stricken with severe kidney stone. While delirious in the hospital, he hallucinated scenes from the film and was said to have yelled, Rosemary, for God's sake, drop the knife. Castle recovered just barely, and he never made, that's the gentleman 
underneath committed one, the bigger, larger um, circle associated with the man just barely and never made a Halloween Hollywood movie hit again. Then Pulaski had relocated to California alongside his new girlfriend, actress Sharon Tate, who was fresh off her first movie role as a witch in Eye of the Devil just before the filming began. She had just tried for the lead role, guess what, in Rosemary's Baby. She had tried out for this role, but Paramount cast Mia Farrell. Tate instead loitered around the set, appearing uncredited like a ghost in the background of Rosemary's young people only party scene, and some say becoming increasingly obsessed with the occult. Many years later, a friend quoted her in print as having said, the devil is beautiful. Most people think he's ugly, but he's not. This is the, this is the man's girlfriend, right? Polanski. People forgot about this, especially in the 60s about Charles Manson. In 1969, by then that was his wife and very pregnant wife, noting in his autobiography, a grotesque thought he had at times. He said in this times, especially because it opened up the door to the spirit realm. He said, you will never see her again. This is what he wrote. This is demonic. He said he had that in his time that his actually his wife would leave here. And that it would be demonic that what would occur. Tate was brutally murdered on August 8th by the Manson family, as was their guess what? Dealing with the fruit of the womb, unborn son, all while Rosemary Baby still lingered in theaters. That's why you shouldn't play around with the occult. According to numerous observers, Manson's killings were programmed using guess what? Beatles song. Mason himself claimed that the song. Helter Skelter contained hidden messages intended for his family. We dealt with the Beatles. We dealt with in regards to how they were, they brought in that wave of Hinduism. They brought in that of the Kundalini spirit. And I can believe it for a fact that Helter Skelter did indeed give this demonic man regards to directions because of the things that it did. Remember that song in regards to Hallelujah? It really was talking about Hare Krishna. That's Those are the things that they did. Susan Atkins, member of the Massa family who later murdered Polanski's pregnant wife, Sharon Tate, was an ex-follower of anti LaVey. She was an ex-follower. Susan Atkins, the member of the Massa family who later murdered her, was an ex-follower of anti LaVey. All of this is connected. The White Album was written largely at an Indian meditation, which has Helter Skelter, with Mia Farrow. And guess who was in attendance? Mia Farrow, the lead role actor in that actress in that movie, was scrawled in blood at the crime scene. Helter Skelter was scrawled in blood at the crime scene. And then a dozen years later, and look at this, in 1980, Leonard was assassinated across the street. Guess what? From that same hotel that they did the movie, the Dakota, the Gable Landmark, where Rosemary's Baby was filmed. This movie is about seduction with the Antichrist, and that's what Halloween is all about, and leading people to damnation. Those that give themselves over to Satan will realize, especially upon death, that we must give an account for the decisions on earth that bring about consequences, not only upon this earth, but echoed and stretched into eternity. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and the 27th verse states, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, guess what? The judgment. We all must come before the judge, Jesus Christ. As described in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the temper. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he have done, whether it be good or bad. Remember, all we, who also agreed to obey and lend their will to the enemy. For Adam and Eve were banished from Eden, never returning to paradise, reaping the repercussions of their actions that impacted, we're impacted generations. What we've seen now, because we took our foot off the pedal, especially in church, about holiness and righteousness has allowed the occult to step in. And now they have possession of this generation. That's why we don't pray. That's why we don't fast. That's why we don't consecrate. We get caught up in emotionalism and not the true anointing and power of God.
that's found in Genesis, the third chapter, verse through the 19th verse. Judas made an agreement with the enemy, for he was a thief. John 12 and 6. And at the Last Supper, Satan entered his, guess what, heart, leading him to betray Isaac because he had fooled around with the enemy, Jesus Christ. Luke, the 22nd chapter and the third verse. After committing this treacherous act, his painful remorse was so great, he committed suicide by hanging himself, as described in Matthew, the 27th chapter, third through the fifth. That's why we have so many young people committing suicide because they're possessed, because they're dealing with the occult. This is not the end of the events of his life described in the Bible. John, the 17th chapter and the 12th, he went to the place that is under the water, the place that's under the mountains, the place that's under the earth. He went to hell while I was with them in the world. I kept them in thy name that thou gavest me. I have kept and none of them has lost, but the son of perdition. That is Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. The Bible says, as we discussed in the hell series, that went that he went to a certain place in the abyss for Acts 1 and 25 says that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. Hell is not a party or a great celebration. Let me say that again. Hell is not a part. Hell is real. Hell is large and you cannot escape. Hell is not a party or great celebration, but a place of outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth, fire and torment and eternal isolation. You can find that in Matthew the eighth chapter. Jesus spoke about hell for over 40 times. Matthew the eighth chapter and the 12th verse. Matthew the 13th chapter. 41st to the 42nd verse, and Revelation the 14th chapter, 9th through the 12th verse. The Antichrist, who will be worshiped by every nation and tongue, Revelation the 13th chapter, 1st through the 6th verse, will also experience the repercussions and consequences and being one with the enemy. Paul Jesus revelated that the Antichrist will be cast into the lake of fire. Oh, let me say it again. Let me let you know that we'll also experience the repercussions and the consequences and being one with the enemy. Jesus revealed that the Antichrist will be cast into the lake of fire, where Satan himself will be cast. For Revelation 20 and 10 says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever i'm about to come to a close but i gotta let you know something because there are still children dealing with the series they're still dealing with this series of the occult and many people don't realize you're opening up the door to witchcraft when you allow your children especially during this time because there's another movie and another book that shall commence associated with this author and that's in regards to harry potter films in this in this book in his book, The Satanic Witch, LeVay stated that all witches must take note and take close attention to this. LeVay stated that all witches must at least symbolically make a pact with the devil. The witch has made a pact with the devil and through rituals dedicated to him gains her power. In order to be a successful witch, one does have to make a pact with the devil. Anton LaVey, the satanic witch. This is what Anton LaVey stated. LaVey, though, as a Satanist, admitted that the media was furthering. He was even saying that's what's going on right now. Furthering Satan's designs and agenda because witches were continuing to be cast in popular culture as good and benevolent. LaVey actually relish in the idea that the masses were being attracted to satanism through the popular guise of the quote-unquote good witch i don't see any true reason to rarely discount the movie this is what he said and tv image of the witch that's why in regards to bewitch remember that series and television show is it's satanic it's witchcraft like it was to indoctrinate you to the occult i don't see any true reason to really discount the movie and tv image of the witch because I think that whatever popular image is most flattering should be used or utilized and sustained whenever possible. People will believe what they want to believe 
And the current image of a witch is the most intriguing and glamorous that has yet to appear. That's what he said during that time. Now it's full ball. J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter series is the most popular book children series ever written. Her books and subsequent movies have initiated countless children. And that's what I'm concerned with, especially on this evening. Countless children into the occult ideologies, a self processed she she possessed she she actually said that she was a self practitioner a wiccan who places real spells into her books she said the initial story of harry potter and many of the characters came in a guess what stream of consciousness remember how we dealt with that whole issue of consciousness that's associated with narcissism she means she opened up the door to the spirit realm and dialogue Listen, so she's talking to demonic spirits and you're allowing your children to read of this series. She said that the initial story of Harry Potter and many of the characters came in a stream. That means they came consistently to her. That's nothing but demonic means and influence that they can occur. Consciousness and dialogue, that means she talked to those demonic spirits. What she hears, guess what she says? Almost audibly, as if she were, which means that, that the literature she developed was given to her by demonic influence and entities, just as she described in her book, The Channeling of Spirits that takes place in the Hodgeworth School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. She stated that it started on a train. It was 1990 and she was traveling from Manchester to London. The character of Harry just strolled into my head. I really did feel he was someone who walked up and introduced himself in my, guess what she's talked about? Her third eye, her mind's eye. I was staring out the window and the idea for Harry just came. He appeared in my mind's eye, very full form. She's referring to, as I stated, her third eye. J.K. Rowling's popular children's novel about Harry Potter, a boy who learns on his 11th birthday that he is the orphaned son of two powerful wizards and possess unique magical powers of his own. He is summoned from his life as an unwanted child to become a student at Hawksworth, an English boarding school for wizards. There he meets several friends who become his closest allies and help him discover the truth about his parents' mysterious deaths. But this is the thing, and we'll talk about this thunderbolt that's on his head and what that social, this is a pagan symbol of witchcraft. And a lot of people don't even know it and why he has it as a part of this of his hairline and his forehead. The divination text on fog in the future is listed as a divination text in the school whose author's name is Cassandra Boblaski. That's interesting. Cassandra Boblaski. Boblaski is an anagram. That's a word formed by rearranging the letters of another word for the occultists who founded the theosophy movement that influenced her, that influenced Aleister Crowley and Luciferin as Satanist and one of the founders of the New Age movement, H.P. Blavatsky, who was a witch. This woman was demonic. She said that the things I even tell you and I've told you about in regards to the Stimulated Sunday series, the rise of the new age movement. This woman believed that Lucifer was God and that God was the enemy. It's a twist and that Prometheus, Prometheus was the light bearer and that the one that was trying to give us knowledge, but God was trying to keep us from it. She railed against God. She said Lucifer was God. Blavatsky also stated that Satan, the snake of the Genesis, is the real creator and benefactor, the father of the spiritual world. She also shares the same initials. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. That's why you should allow your children to read everything. She also, H.P. Blavatsky, shares the same initials of Harry Potter. The actual name of the book is called, guess what? Isis Unveiled, that's associated with Asheroth, the very goddess that the children of Israel were encountering and dealing with with regards to the groves. Her first major work, Harry Potter's life mirrors 
and patterns that of Aleister Crowley. Crowley abandoned his strict upbringing, claiming his mother was a religious bigot. He was vying against the word of God. He discovered he was a sorcerer by his preteens, the same age, 11. Harry found that he had occultic powers. The number 11 is supposedly the sacred number of magic, M-A-G-I-C-K itself. I'm talking about the real deal. I'm not talking about that stuff that you watch on television and people are doing all this. I'm talking about the real deal. K is the number 11, is the 11th number of the alphabet. This number 11 is also exhibited in other aspects of the storyline, for it's the length of his wand. All of this stuff is demonic. All this stuff has meaning and significance, for a wand represents power. The, lighting, the lightning bolt on Harry's head is an ancient occult and satanic symbol of power. This is why we have to deal with and reprove works of darkness. For Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so when literature and film like Harry Potter are, are produced and accepted in Christian practices as acceptable, it leads to individuals claiming that an individual can be a follower of Christ and a witch, just like this woman who calls herself a Christian witch like Valerie Love. Despite adamant warning stated in scripture against witchcraft, Miss Love considers herself a practicing Christian witch and an ordained minister of spiritual consciousness who started a school covenant of Christian witches mystery school, which recently launched in Salem, Massachusetts on last year for those that want self-actualization. Here is she taking a hexagram and she's putting it with the cross through the practice of witchcraft. Yet she leaves out the penalty of participating in witchcraft to her followers for the Bible says in Exodus the 22nd chapter and the 18th verse and Leviticus the 20th chapter and the 27th verse, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. You should have nothing to do with anyone that practices the detestable practice of witchcraft. A man also or a woman that have a familiar spirit or that is a wizard should surely be put to death. That should stone them with stones, their blood should be upon, meaning that God wants nothing to do, and he wants you to have nothing to do with witchcraft. Harry Potter, Bewitched, I Dream of Genie, and the soft-hearted Sabrina the Teenage Witch has made way for the pervasive and outright showing of satanic practices in a new Netflix show. And this is one that's highly popular, especially many children are watching it during this time. That's why I'm dealing with it right now. The chilling adventures of Sabrina, the teenage witch. Sabrina was born from a warlock father and a mortal mother, both deceased. And then yet on her 16th birthday, per this tradition, she can choose to strike a deal with the dark Lord, which is Satan himself, and keep her powers with the catch that she must cut ties with her mortal life. And then this is this is demonic. Women witches must sign away their freedom to, to a patriarch of dark lord, which is the enemy in order to maintain and gain power. This is on Netflix right now. And children are watching this. Her powers are depicted to come from demonic powers, dark power. And they are aligned with the teachings of Satanism and the new age movement with nothing held back. Think Rosemary's baby and the omen. So this is a baby or a product of Rosemary Baby and the Omen. Sabrina, in the onset of the show, is preparing for, guess what? Not receiving a baptism that one would have to show an outward showing of their, of their faith in God. She experiences a dark baptism during, guess what? Halloween. Yes, with the upside down cross. You see that. I'm glad you see that first, lady. Yes, the upside down cross. You see the pentagram that's within the letters. And these are associated with the comic book that took something with Sabrina. Many people were watching on ABC and thought it was just a great show and those wondering, but it was leading to this. Because this is the true nature of these shows and what the essence of, because once the enemy gets you comfortable with his detestable practices, then he can give them over to you fully and he can expose you to everything. 
a dark baptism. And there's many dark baptisms that are going on right now. And guess what? Within the covenant, and these are 12, 13 year old children and people watching this stuff. And then guess what it says? Praise Satan. And they espouse anti LaVey's line based on Aleister Crowley's do as thou will. It's about free will, not good and evil. And they keep saying it over and over and over again. The baptism is scheduled on our 16th birthday, which I described as on Halloween, which happens to fall, guess what, beneath an eclipse. And a dark baptism is a mockery. They're mocking the word of God. They're mocking a relationship with the true and living God. And counterfeit version of water baptism believers are to partake of as an outward showing of their faith in and relationship with Jesus Christ. Her allegiance will be to Satan, and she is baptized in blood, which is a, within a hexagram, which is another counterfeit measure associated with baptism. And then guess what? You know that thing that showed up in Detroit? That thing that with regards to the church of Satan, that's shown over to the left? I got to annotate this. There's a reason why that was given here. That's why we've been seeing an increase or rise of demonic activity in our city. Pan and Baphomet, a horned Greek, a horned goat man representation of the enemy, that for which is associated with masonry. The same false God Jesus contended with on Caesarea Philippi. Pan is not I am, but whom Christ showed his strength and fortitude. Pan represented the spirit of the wild, the unbridled passion for his name in Greek means all, and is also considered the god of lust. And then you know this pansexual lifestyle that is amongst young people, that they're turning them to an alarming rate where affection can be for any person, animal, or thing. This is on purpose. The god Pan sits atop of the Panhellenic Council of the Divine Nine whose council of Greek and Egyptian gods of each of the nine fraternities and sororities is under his auspice. For fraternities and sororities are transition groups to masonry and Eastern stars. So what they're doing, they're getting you inoculated to go into these demonic groups and organizations and to support them. Do you ever notice right here where it shows what's behind her? That's Pan. That's Baphomet. That's what's behind her. Hence it's showing her with horns. And then these, this red represent, represents blood. And they try to make this, they use a person that seems like they're innocent, but ultimately to lead you to the occult. Who gives esoteric secret knowledge and knowledge to those. For those in the higher transition and power and authority. And they're doing this on purpose. And they're doing this to lead people astray. For occult practices are opening the realm of the supernatural that leads to demonic possession, such as the recent middle schoolers in Central Florida that brought knives to school in a full plot to kill classmates, cut them up, and drink their blood before killing themselves. The girls plan to stake out a school bathroom and wait for smaller students to enter According to the police affidavit, they plan to cut their victims' throats and cut off their bodies, eat the flesh, and drink their victims' blood, authorities said. The students then plan to fatally stab themselves. Detectives said that the girls devised the plot while watching scary movies at one of their houses over the weekend. Hence why this, this epitomizes Proverbs, the first chapter, 10th through the 11th. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thee not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 18th verse, describes how we are to deal with this influential enemy that is running across this land with his word. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. This is why our purpose and focus in our affection and our practices is to be living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. First Corinthians 10th and the 31st verse, where therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. 
Leviticus 11 chapter and the 44 verse says, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For direction and guidance, seek God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to remind you that God is against evil. First Peter, the third chapter and the 12th verse, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. He wants you to resist the devil. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amos, the fifth chapter and the fourth verse says, seek God and not evil. He says, seek, excuse me, seek good, that which is of the Father, and not evil, that ye may what? Live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. The devil desires, and I'm praying now, but it's not going to happen, desires to cause demophobia and promote fear on this day. This does something to children when they are taught to be frightened or dress up as demons to frighten others. When they grow up, this may cause hindrances in their ability to deal with the devil when, the, when he comes for them. Yet God's word says, no, oh, I thank you, Lord. In 2 Timothy, want to say, for God has not given us the spirit of it. Go ahead and turn off that nightlight. You can be able to sleep in the dark, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. But a power and a love and a sound mind. Satan the Lord rebuke you and the hand of God bind you now in the name of Jesus. We will not have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Oh, Lord, we want to do what's right. We want to do what's holy. We don't want you to set your face against us. We don't want you to turn us over to that of the enemy. That for when we put our hands in iniquity, the enemy can have authority over it. But no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We will not be inoculated to the occult. We will not have our children be inoculated to these demonic practices. We will stay. We will keep our hands. We will keep back from that for which is of Halloween. We won't pass out and do things that are associated with the occult. We shall live holy. We shall live righteously. And Lord, forgive us. Forgive us of every sin of omission or commission, especially in regards to that demonic holiday, that we will seek your kingdom during that day, that we will live righteously during this day, that we will share this word with many of our loved ones and many of those in passing and tell them the truth and warn them of the judgment and the wrath that is to come. Because if anyone has any association with that of the Antichrist and the false prophet, the beast, in regards to the Antichrist, we will find ourselves in the lake of fire. So we don't want to be dull during this time. We don't want to be ignorant of the devil's wiles and devices. We even pray for our president. There are witches that are set up that are trying to do things to try to deter the way that the direction and the focus of our nation. And many people don't even realize or see what's occurring. The enemy is working on both sides of the fence, but no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Whoever is in the White House, whatever their practices and the things they do will not affect or change our relationship with you. Those that are steadfast, immovable, always abiding in the word of God. We have safety. We have surety. We have security in you, especially of our eternal salvation. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be reproved. Lord, help us not to deter or come away from reproval and rebuke. That shows chastisement, shows love. It shows affection for us, a desire for us that we should not perish. And so we know those that rebuke or reject reproval, reject rebuke, those that are not of you and those that have no desire to be of you. Lord, we ask you to change their mind change their mindsets, change their ways, change their habits before it's too late.
it's getting late in the day. The, the hourglass is far spent. And we're getting to the time before your appearance and soon return. We want to be ready. We don't want any weights and any sin to beset us that we can be ready when you come. Oh, we want to be ready when you come. We don't want to be down here. We want to receive eternal salvation instead of eternal damnation. Break the foothold of pharmacia that will increase on that day, on tomorrow, on the 31st. Let many deter from those practices, those occultic practices. Let them put the bottle down. Let them put the mask down, the clothing down. Skip and leave the trick or treating and find themselves before you. Seek in your face, seeking to live right, seeking to live holy, and seeking to be acceptable unto you. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the word of God that has come forth to deal with the matters of the enemy. Strengthen yourself, show yourself strong in the midst of us, and let your glory be revealed. Let your power be revealed. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you on this evening. We appreciate you joining us, and we're grateful and honored that you would join us on this evening. I know that it's extending the time as far as spent, but the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, wanted to deal with this matter extensively so that we, especially as the people of God, will not allow us to be as a snare to us, I hope you enjoy your day on tomorrow, but negate from being associated with Halloween. If you have any questions, if you have any questions or comments, please place them into Facebook. We will definitely respond in real time. We appreciate you. Thank God for you. Come and receive and see the fire on Sunday at 4 p.m. In Warren, Michigan, we'll be coming together. We're doing the COVID cleaning. We're doing everything according to CDC standards, and we would love to have you here. I had a question or a comment just come through, and I'm taking a look at that right now. Yes, that is correct, Sister Blackman. That is so true. That's Pan is a representation of gender fluidity, a mixture of male and female. In regards to Satanism, they believe in that gender fluidity. They believe that's associated with the powers. That's why why you got that move, that cartoon that is out was was Stephen Awesome. Was, I think that's the name of the cartoon where they show much gender fluidity and it shows a great deal of homosexuality that shows up on the Cartoon Network. And so yes, Pan is associated because guess what? Anything goes. Do as thou will. Do what you want to do. So it's associated with Pan. Pan. The Greek god Pan did anything and everything. And so that's why they showed him with Baphomet associated with almost the yin and yang. It's Gnosticism, male and female. Excellent observation. Excellent observation. Are there any questions? Again, come and worship with us on Sunday, November 1st at 4 p.m. at our Warren location, 30200 Shana Road. Warren, Michigan, 48088. I appreciate everyone that has stayed on. I know this was a different time that we would have normally, but it's a special occasion because of dealing with this demonic spirit. I thank God for you all joining us. Please come and join us on Sunday. May God bless you, Richard. Thank you, Lord.